Welcome in to the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and it is time to update the uh, Week 10 rankings. We'll look at all of the positions, the quarterbacks, the wide receivers, the running backs, and the tight ends. And at the end of the video, I will go through and make a, a DFS lineup on DraftKings. Now, usually at this point in the video, I would do a one big thing from the Thursday night game, or maybe one big thing for each of the teams. I have one thing to silver lining for one of the teams, and that is Chicago. Justin Fields should be back next week, and that should be good news for DJ Moore, and of course, anybody who needs Justin Fields back. And um, that, that's about that. Khalil Herbert to be returning. Now, let's update these quarterback rankings. And of course, uh, Josh Allen's fine here. Stephon Diggs showed up on the injury report on Friday with a back injury. So uh, we'll see what news comes out from that. It'd be tough to lower him, but at the same time, I think it would be uh, necessary. Probably Justin Herbert, Jared Goff might become the one and two because Burrow's going to be without T. Higgins, going to be without Jamar Chase. I'm thinking, um, well, we don't know about Jamar Chase. Right now, going to be without T. Higgins. It looks like he probably will have Jamar Chase. I'm not too concerned about T. Higgins missing. I would be more concerned about Jamar Chase missing for him. But uh, it does lower my expectations, and so I am going to move him down just a couple of spots behind this game that uh, at least these both of these teams are much more healthy than both of the teams for the Houston-Cincinnati game, both of the offenses specifically for those. Well, uh, it's, it's, Houston's pretty darn banged up all over. But, uh, yeah, we're going to make that change right off the bat, so that's going to move, of course, those two up. C.J. Stroud, the question is, is do we want to move him back? I am a little bit more concerned about him. Um, I have my concerns about pretty much everybody right behind him as well, though. So we'll leave that like this uh, definitely for now and probably throughout Sunday. By the way, you can come visit me. On, I, I realize there's another game in journey, Germany this weekend. So I will be live 45 minutes prior to kickoff for the morning game. And then, of course, prior to the main set of games, I will go up uh, one and a half hours prior to kickoff. So come join me there for any start sick questions. Moving on, uh, Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson, I feel fine. I'm going to say the same for Brock Purdy, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, no changes there. The, the next change would be, do I feel a little bit more comfortable now that I've gotten used to the idea of Kyler Murray coming back? It has been a really long return from his ACL. He has seemingly been healthy for several weeks now. So I don't know that his rushing upside is going to be totally capped, but it is still something to be concerned about. I do feel pretty comfortable. I just I think that's going to be a high-scoring game. Yeah, you know, we're going to stick with it. Uh, the Vegas odds think that Seattle's going to take a lead. That's, you know, we already expect Sam Howell to just have such a high volume anyways, but especially if they're from behind, we can really rely on that. And a little bit higher of an over-under there. So I'll, I'll stick with the uh, the player temperature gauge, which is taking some of that into account. And then Russell Wilson, Geno Smith, you know, hopefully he can do it this week. Feel good there. I don't think I'm going to have any changes on down the line here. Well, that's going to be it for the quarterbacks. So now we are moving on to the wide receivers. We've got Stephon Diggs up top. I, I already told you about that. He was added into the injury report with a back injury on Friday. Um, you know, I, I guess we could go ahead and just do this. Just for the fun of it, because I am going to feel, um, regardless of what the situation comes from that, I'm going to feel a little bit better about Amonra now. Uh, a little bit concerned that maybe that could limit Stephon Diggs. And, you know, probably the same with Keenan Allen. Just uh, feel better about the health situation there. So we will move Stephon Diggs down a couple of spots. Jamar Chase, we are expecting to be playing. He might not play. Otherwise, I feel good about these top eight. Um, the, the one move that I th I've been looking at and thinking about making was Chris Olave and DeAndre Hopkins. Really feel good about DeAndre in that matchup. And then that's going to bring us to a gap that I think I need to close here. So uh, Garrett Wilson and Christian Kirk, I had somebody when I was live on Thursday ask me a question that included those two. Uh, it was like a pick three out of four or something like that. And um, I basically told them I would go Christian Kirk uh, instead of Garrett Wilson. Or it was pick two out of three, I think it was. And so... Um, I went with that, and I think my rankings need to reflect that. 
And so the question is, is how do we do this? So to start off with, I think I would feel comfortable keeping Terry McLaurin uh, basically ahead of Christian Kirk for sure. But then I don't, I don't know about DK Metcalf anymore. So that's going to mean we're going to want to move Christian Kirk up ahead of Deontay DK. It's going to bring him up to 13 and then Garrett at 14. Did I do that wrong? All right, there we go. I, I got it. Uh, so mesh mashes those up a little bit. Terry McLaurin jumps up a spot. Christian Kirk jumps up a few spots. Garrett Wilson drops a couple of spots, still keeping him ahead of DK Metcalf. Just concerned about DK Metcalf and that health over the past few weeks. It's been looking um, pretty scary, but it is just such a great matchup, and it, and it works really well specifically for his skill set against Washington. So I'm um, looking for that upside, hoping that things look much better this week for you if you are a DK Metcalf owner for DK for you and Deontay has actually been like really good he's he's a you know a buy low kind of guy quite potentially uh so far this season the only thing is he's going up against Green Bay they've been really good at limiting wide receiver production then the other thing that we wanted to look at was Devontae Adams uh all the way back from my original rankings video I said should I drop him down to the bottom of uh this tier I don't know where that tier ended but I'm thinking it's probably around Marquise Brown that I would feel comfortable starting all of these guys over. So we're going to do that. We're going to drop Devontae Adams down to my wide receiver 21 and move everybody else back up. And uh, somebody who got removed from this list was Nico Collins. He is out for the week. Same with uh, T. Higgins got removed, obviously. I talked about that already, I guess. But he was out. So what I did already with my rankings in regards to when T. Higgins was ruled out is I did move Tyler Boyd up one spot. The question will be, do I want to move him up more? And I do want to quick point out Andre Yosefus, uh, wide receiver for Cincinnati, I think is an interesting DFS play. And I think we're going to try and smash him into the DFS lineup tonight. Maybe go real cheap at a couple of wide receiver spots. Got a couple of guys that we might want to target. And so as I was talking about, um, Nico Collins ruled out Tank Dell. Uh, you know, probably that improves his stock a little bit. And so we'll just move him up one spot here ahead of Debo Samuel. I don't know that I'm quite uh, uh, prepared to move him up to Deontay Johnson. Sometimes a step up for a young guy like him in talent uh, across the way, him being kind of maybe prototypically treated as the wide receiver one by the other opposing defense might be a little bit too much for his young self to handle. So just being a little bit cautious with how much I move him up, but obviously tank Dell's pretty much in must start territory this week. Now for sure, if he wasn't already. And I do also want to move up Marquise Brown here just a little bit. Um, the question is, do I want to move him up ahead of Tyler Lockett? I almost feel more optimistic really like the Arizona-Atlanta game to be a high-scoring game. And so I think I'm going to do that. You can see, actually, the projections would say I should do that. Uh, the heating gauge doesn't necessarily say that. But, you know, if it came down to it, I would start Marquise Brown this week, overlock it. Um, I have some faith that Kyler Murray will look pretty decent, and Marquise Brown should get peppered with targets. All right, so we're going to scroll down a little bit ways here. I think... The next spot we're going to want to look at is probably going to be Jordan Addison. We're going to keep Corlin Sutton there as much as I don't feel comfortable with it. Um, it's, a, it's a good situation for him to potentially have a big game. But Jordan Addison going up against New Orleans is really, really good against perimeter receivers. Uh, Josh Dobbs is not really that great at throwing the deep ball, which is more so what Jordan Addison gets. But then again, last week we saw them connect on a couple of throws. So I don't want to I don't want to poo-poo Jordan Addison too much, but I do like George, uh, Drake London more than him. That's for sure. Do I like Drake London more than Gabe Davis and Jahan Dotson, or do I like Jordan Addison less than either of them? Is the real question. And I think the answer is uh, I would rather take the risk on Jahan Dotson than what I feel is a very low chance of a good game from Jordan Addison. Although it is definitely possible, still wide receiver 27. And of course, I did remove all the Carolina and Chicago players from my rankings already, so um, that pushes some people up a little ways. Um, let's see here. Romeo Dobbs was a guy who I gave a love him. I thought for sure that Christian Watson was going to be out this week, but uh, apparently he didn't actually have a concussion. So we need to move Romeo down. How much, though? Because I'm looking at this, and I can't move him below Jacoby. So for now, I'm just going to move him 
move Zay Flowers up one spot. And I think what we need to do is move at least um, one or two people up. So Demario Douglas here going up against Indianapolis. We're going to move him up. He is questionable for this game, so keep an eye out on that. Just make sure he's okay. It doesn't seem like people are too overly concerned about him not playing. Would I like Demario over Gabe Davis? It seems like a bridge too far. I think he is in the same tier with Jordan Addison, Gabe Davis, though. Um, so we're close. Zay Flowers against Cleveland. I really don't like that. I feel like I would feel more comfortable with Demario Douglas over that. George Pickens against Green Bay. Hey, he's kind of in the same boat as Gabe Davis, where I think I would take a shot on that over a little bit of an unknown. So we're going to move Demario Douglas up ahead of Zay Flowers. And I really think I would struggle to play Jacoby Myers for sure ahead of Jerry Judy. So he probably needs to be moved up. Would I like Jerry Judy over Romeo Dobbs? Um, probably. And then we're going to trust the projections on Zay Flowers. I, I, that's kind of a toss-up for me. So we're going to move Judy up to 32 here. Then a couple of other uh, player announcements. Zay Jones has been ruled out for the week. Mac Hollins was ruled out. Curtis Samuel is questionable. He was limited three times all week. And I'm not ranking him yet. If he does get ranked, that does uh, get me a little bit concerned for Jahan Dotson. Um, maybe that would push Jordan Addison back ahead of him for me. Just out of, uh, you know, Jahan Dotson's emergence has correlated a little bit with Curtis Samuel being banged up and then being out. So, um, yeah, we'll see. The question, the next question is going to be Christian Watson, I believe. Do we want to move him up uh, further than wide receiver 40 where I kind of plunked him once it was obvious he was playing? I do the matchup against Pittsburgh. It does fit Christian Watson's skill set really well, which is why I liked Romeo Dobbs because he can be the deep target guy. But uh, when Christian Watson's in, he's more of the deep target threat. And it's hard to say I would play him over Romeo Dobbs. And I'm actually going to stack him right behind Romeo Dobbs there. It's just such a bad matchup for Jacoby Myers. Let me know if you think Jacoby Myers should go behind Jackson Smith and Jigba there, even behind Tyler Boyd in the comments. Uh, I'd be interested to see what you think there. Maybe I'll make a change. After that, we got uh, Noah Brown, Jaden Reed, Michael Wilson. Would like to be higher on him, but that's really tough to do, but still... If you have room to roster someone, you might need some help at wide receiver. Um, he would be a good little stash guy to grab. After that, I think we're looking pretty good. I reorganized some of this earlier today. Uh, if you need to look closer at that, or of course you can check it out on the website. Kyle Phillips is somebody that we're kind of excited about this week. That is the other DFS guy I am thinking that we can get in for cheap in uh, the lineup. I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to be building and um, like I said, so I told you, okay, K.J. Osborne also not currently being ranked with a concussion. I don't expect him to play. Josh Downs, uh, he might play. It hasn't seemed like he's likely to play all week, but he has been limited in practice. So we'll see on him. If Josh Downs were to be active, um, where would I rank him? And, of course, Justin Jefferson, I haven't been ranking either. He is questionable as well. But Josh Downs out of that group I think is most likely to play. And so if he were active, going up against New England, not the greatest, not the worst matchup, he would be, like, uh, somewhere in this territory, a uh, lower or a high-end wide receiver three for me for the rest of the week. Let's move on to updating the running backs. All right, we're going to jump down to the first uh, order of business. I laid this one out for us. Uh, Damian Pierce has been ruled out, so we can just go ahead and move him to out, and that's going to cause us to have to move up. Devin Singletary, who, as you can see, a uh, little out of place with these projections. I have updated those projections for Damian Pierce being out already. So, um, where do we put Devin Singletary? It, it's going to be at the towards the back end of these starters, and I think I think it's probably ahead of Tyler Al Algier, right? And last week's performance was so ugly. I'm going to keep him behind Tyler Algier for now. Uh, I'll see how I feel about it, um, you know, come tomorrow morning. But that's what we're going to do for now. We'll also quick point out Keaton Mitchell is questionable with a hamstring injury. So, um, you know, hopefully you're not relying on Keaton Mitchell this week. But that would help out, um your faith in the other running backs for Baltimore. Why can't I find him? Justice Hill, 
might move up, um, maybe. I don't know that I would move him up. And I think it's the same thing with Gus Edwards. I really want to move him up. It's not a good matchup there. You can kind of see the projections. Just the fall-off happens right there at RB23. So I don't think I would move, at least with the rankings as they currently are, I would move Gus Edwards up at all. And I do know there's a couple guys we might move down right ahead of him. So we'll see there. And then James Conner is trending in the right direction to play. So why don't we rank him? I wasn't going to do that, but let's do that. And we're going to do that at the end. First of all, let's just make sure we like everything else ahead of him. So Christian McCaffrey, Austin Ackler, Kamara, nothing's changed in any of those situations. I don't believe I feel different about anyone up so far here. Would I feel more comfortable with Derrick Henry over Saquon Barkley? Maybe. That's another one if you want in the comments. Uh, let me know if I should move Derrick Henry ahead of Saquon. That's tough. It's tough. Remember, this is half PPR projections. So um, full PPR, I definitely would not. But uh, Derrick Henry's been getting some receptions as of late. Hasn't been too bad in that department. No changes up in the front end here. You know what we could do? We could move Ramondre up ahead of Kenneth Walker. Is that something we would really want to do is the real question. And I do have concerns about the usage for Ken Walker and Jameer Gibbs. So I don't have, I know what I'm getting in Ramondre. Let's do that. And that might be a mistake. But that is the change I'm going to make. I like that floor there too for Ramondre, even just projection wise. He's beaten him out um, due to the matchup. I do feel... Got a little bit lucky with that 60-yard run last week, not expecting anything like that again. But um, also, you know, maybe uh, that was a sign of just better blocking things to come looking forward, and Indianapolis is a solid matchup for Ramondre. So right down here is where, like, I, I, I start to question the rankings, and I think the big one when I look at this that just feels wrong is Jerome Ford. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him back to uh, just a couple of spots here. going to continue to keep him ahead of Gus Edwards. But if Keaton Mitchell is out, then I might move Gus Edwards ahead of Jerome Ford there. This is how I'm going to play that out. Other than that, like I'm looking at this, I'm going to move Zach Charbonnet up ahead of Zach Moss. It just seems like uh, the end of Zach Moss has told in. And the potential beginning of Zach Charbonnet has been uh, getting told in as well. So I feel a little bit better about that. It probably, I might move Zach Moss actually behind all this group. You just see that floor pretty darn icky compared to basically um, all the other floors ahead of him. So why don't I do that quickly? And I think that's just going to leave us with the, the one last thing here, moving James Conner up. So... Okay, we're not going to play James Conner over Aaron Jones. We're not going to play him over Rashad White with what he's done recently. Are we? What's the matchup? Atlanta? Maybe we are. I don't know. I'm struggling. I think I'm going to play it a little bit safe in week one here with uh, everybody coming back. Uh, yeah, I might be a little bit cautious. I am optimistic about James Conner. We'll just say that. I'm going to put him at running back 20 there behind Jameer Gibbs. But, um... You know, it, it was very close to putting him up towards uh, much closer to the top uh, ahead of Rashid White, Rashad White there. So same tier for sure. And that brings us to the tight ends, which I actually think that there is a change or two. So we've got Sam Laporta, Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson is coming into the weekend questionable, but is expected to play. And uh, the first thing I was thinking of changing was Dalton Kincaid over Dalton Schultz. But... Uh, the reason that Dalton Schultz is this deep red here is this matchup. Cincinnati's a really, really good tight end matchup. And with a note, Nico Collins, that just uh, reinforces the fact that I'm going to keep Dalton Schultz here over Dalton Kincaid, but I uh, do have high hopes for Dalton Kincaid. If Stephon Diggs goes out, um, um, you know, maybe I'll think of moving Dalton Kincaid up because then he might get really peppered with targets. And um, I feel a little bit better about that Buffalo offense still than Houston barely other than that I was also thinking of moving George Kittle down and I think we are going to do that we we've seen what a full healthy San Francisco offense looks like in quite a few um games enough games to have seen a trend for George Kittle and, and it's not a good trend for him so 
So my first move, I'm just going to move him back two spots. George Kittle, that is. Uh, Trey McBride, Taste, I'm Hill jumping him. The next question would be Logan Thomas, uh, Jake Ferguson. Do I want them to jump George Kittle? And I kind of do. And truth be told, if I had George Kittle and Logan Thomas, given recency bias, I think I would play George Kittle. And I think I'm wrong to do it. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. See, everything's saying that's the wrong call. But, uh... I would have a tough time sitting him over Logan Thomas for now, and I'm not uh, overly excited about Jake Ferguson this week. So we'll keep it as is. David Njoku, I haven't heard anything more about him being questionable or, or anything, so I assume that he's probably playing, even if he is still questionable. Outside of that, um, there is nothing I want to do except for move Irv Smith up a little ways in the rankings. And we're going to move him all the way up to uh, to 19 here. This could be uh, an Irv Smith week if there ever were going to be one. I'm willing to take a little bit of a gamble on it. Obviously, you can see from the projections, the uh, it hasn't really happened yet this season, but I think this could be the week. And uh, at, at, once we get to Tyler Conklin, I'm willing to take the gamble on that one. All right, and that's going to bring us to time to draft a DK lineup. Um, entering into one of the, the big free tournaments here to start off with. I do some other stuff, but um, I always like this to be the first lineup I create for you guys. So I'm kind of coming in a little bit blind, but I know I want to start out by taking my discounts at um, wide receiver, which were, it was one of them was Andre Yosevis. So we will add him and... The other is Kyle uh, Phillips for Tennessee. We're going to take uh, a couple of uh, risks there. We'll see if see if we can spend all of the average uh, remaining cap that we have. But I know I wanted to spend up on Christian McCaffrey this week. And we can probably spend up for another one. But why don't we first uh, fill out our DST because I think we're just going to spend up for the Cowboys. It seems like the slam dunk choice. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But we've saved some cash money to help us be able to do that. So we will. And then I think we'll just take the obvious pick with Sam Laporta at tight end. Spend up for him. We did not choose Chase. All right, there we go. So we have about 6,000 DK bucks to spread across on average. I mean, we could save a dollar here, and, uh, I mean, do we pair Will Levis with Kyle Phillips? Seems a little risky, maybe unnecessary, but, you know, there could be some disappointments up top for quarterbacks. The, the guy I think I want to do is, uh, let's do Jared Goff, because I think I also want to spend up for a Monro St. Brown. Can we make this work? 5,000 uh, average, That's we can work with that, maybe. Let's see, if we take Joe Mixon, we got 3,800 left. That's not bad. We do have Andre Yosefus already. We're kind of banking on, like, the touchdown for Yosefus. He's not going to be a high-catch kind of guy. It's more of a deep threat. Is there anybody less expensive that I want? I don't think so, although... You know, I am willing to take um, Jalen Warren, actually, which allows me. It gives us a little bit of cash to go like TJ Hawkinson, Jahan Dotson. I think I trust that Hawkinson will probably get peppered again. You know, the double tight end lineup. I think we're going to do that. Let's do that. This looks like fun. Uh, this could go any which way. Do you think that uh, one of those running backs is gonna gonna break away against the Packers at one point or another? So, Jared Goff is my quarterback, followed by uh, Christian McCaffrey. Jalen Warren is my running backs. Andre Yosefus, Kyle Phillips at my wide receiver spots. Amonra St. Brown for my other wide receiver, and then Sam Laporta, Hawkinson in at my flex, and the Cowboys DST. And um, it's an interesting lineup. I'm I obviously need some of these. Um, lower performing players to perform to make it work but what's life without a little bit of risk thank you very very much for stopping on through i hope that you enjoyed this updated rankings video as much as you did last week because it seemed to be much popular than the old format so uh, we'll keep it going peace out everybody good luck this weekend and once again you can stop by 
uh, before all the games, you know, before the main slate of games, before the morning game in Germany, and I'll be here live on YouTube for your start sick questions. Bye-bye.